Chris Adiar, one to three. They're off with Grand Alliance. Mo Jack hit the slowest to get out of the stalls for the Group 2 Princess of Wales' stake, sponsored by the Kingdom of Bahrain and Global Storm uh, White Cap, bustled up early by James Doyle to adopt the front running role to Isra, the striped cap, and Adea and Will Buick in the all blue. And from a sluggish start, Grand Alliance drops in last of the quartet as they move towards the end of the first quarter mile. And it's the Godolphin pair who are the first half of the field early. Global Storm leading the prohibitively prized favourite and former derby winner Adea. Isra tracking the Godolphin duo. And Grand Alliance cast a little adrift at this stage. He's six or seven lengths behind the others and just not really picking up the bit as they swing round into the Bunbury Mile and complete the first third of the contest. Global Storm leading them down towards the seven marker. Tracked by Adea, Isra slipstreaming and Grand Alliance and it's single file stuff and they spurn the running rail drifting more towards the center of the tracker uh, approaching halfway at a fairly generous 38 miles an hour or so they were around about 12 seconds for the last furlong still Grand Alliance adrift of his three rivals as Global Storm leads Adea and Isra, the striped cap, waiting in the wings as they move inside the last five furlongs on down to the final half mile of the Group 2 Princess of Wales' stakes. Global Storm ensuring this has been a good test of the trip. They're still nudging 40 miles an hour. Adea in the all blue poise, still swinging away in the hands of Will Buick. Isra making his effort now as Adea comes sweeping on by and moves through to take over. Coming down inside the final two and a half furlongs. Adea asked a stretch by Buick. Isra, though, is going with him out on the right. They've quickly dropped Global Storm. There's been nothing at all from Grand Alliance. And Adea is now having to work. And Isra is looking threatening as they race down into the dip. And Isra noses ahead. Adea really having to work here as they climb inside the furlong and Isra is beginning to assert Adea leaning left he can't offer anything else and he looks leg weary close home and Isra is powering away gonna be eased close home by Jim Crowley Isra wins the Princess of Wales stakes and turns over Adea Global Storm in third and Grand Alliance in fourth well, just the four runners, and it's Isra who shone brightest in the Princess of Wales' stake. 7-2 to two the winner for Jim Crowley and John and Thady Gosden. It was a double for Jim Crowley. Bitter disappointment uh, for connections for Adiar, a horse who travelled really well into the race but looked quite uncomfortable, seemed to empty quite quickly. And it's Isra, who was very progressive in handicaps last season, has taken a big step up in class from listed to Group 2 and lands it in good style. Well, the Princess of Wales Estates was meant to be a springboard to the King George for Adiar. He's been beaten by Isra. A bit of a surprise. His trainer, Charlie Appleby, is here. What's your Im immediate reaction to that? A disappointment. Um, but look, even watching the race, I was very happy with the way, you know, position we had. Um, but from the half mile, mark, the way Jim was travelling, I did say that I was talking, stood next to somebody. I said, this horse is a proper mile and a quarter horse. Uh, I said, if it turns in, if we're going to start sprinting, we'll see. Uh, not that we're going to turn it into a sprint because we set that solid fractions, but uh, and then when Williams pulled, we, we pulled either side of Global Storm then, and, and you know Jim's come under the pump before we had. I thought, oh, we we'll go and get the job done now. And once he hits the rising ground, they pick up. And Williams said that was at that point that he just he just emptied on me. Um, he said he just didn't, you know, I wasn't finishing at all. Um, no abnormalities afterwards. He's having a good healthy blow, you know, but no more than on excessive or anything like that. So, uh, and I can't use the grounds as an excuse. He's got plenty of form on quick ground. Well, the only thing uh, I was going to say to you was he's a older horse. He's got a lot bigger. Might it be that uh, uh, that ground on these kind of undulations might not be his bag anymore? Yeah, no. Well, that, William Sounds didn't. Like yeah, you don't think no, he is, no. I mean, William didn't. So, yeah, William said I was happy the way he, he, he moved throughout the race on it. Um, you know, as we know, when it comes to the business end. Some, some, sometimes one of those good excuses we'll always go to with the ground but uh, <laughs> you're being uh, very honest <laughs> um, but uh, no I'm not going to I can't use that okay. I'm just more disappointed that he just didn't finish out you know whether we got beat or not he just he was paddling up the hill really so, so. is it go away do some tests try and get to the bottom of what's going on or what yeah very I mean obviously yeah but, but first and foremost just make sure everything's all all right I mean he looks fine after race and he just say just now that's he had a good healthy blow and and uh, you know he's come back in sound that's the main thing um, 
the, the pressure on everybody's lips will be saying well, what happens about the King George, I don't think realistically. I'm not going to say we're, we won't be unless all of a sudden we see something that we're blatantly obvious why we've been beaten today. But uh, on the back of that, you'd have a job to be going yeah. into a King George or any confidence. Particularly it's looking at quite hot one as well. Sure. From what you've seen of him at home, has he still got it at the age of five? Yeah, I think we saw that. To be fair, you know, at Newmarket, I know, it, you know, at the end of the day, it was, it was, a, it was the same horse there in, in Global Storm. You could say, well, we probably beat him the same distance, but it's just the way he did it at Newmarket over the mile holster there. Once he hit the rising ground, was his most impressive bit, really. Um, and like I say, we we went into Ascot very confident that you know he'd run a big race. We weren't going to go there and say we were going to be good enough to win at that trip, but uh, and I, ran, I think he ran a solid race. But um, yeah, disappointed. But, but nothing blatantly obvious as we stand uh, as an excuse. Charlie, thank you very much for your thoughts. Pleasure. Love my lady. Cheers. Thank you. John Gosden and I were just admiring this beautiful cup um, for the Princess of Wales' yeah. stakes. Um, beautiful it is as well. And Isra has just won it for his owner, Shaker Hissa. Congratulations. That must have been a pleasant surprise, I'd imagine. Yeah, I think everyone thought we were running to be second. And uh, they've gone very strong fractions. It was not falsely run. I think they're a tick off the track record, 227 and change, so no, great performance, he, he, he coped with the ground which was fast enough for him, but it's in beautiful condition the track, it's not been raced on since last year, so it's pristine condition. And coming here, what, we, what did you make of his last run, did you feel that he hadn't quite shown what he was capable of just yet? No, no, it was a mistake, to, we thought he'd stay, but he, remember he is by Muhra, who's a sprinter, and he's out, uh, out of a Linux mare, so you get stamina. On the other hand, you know, Takaruda was uh, a mile and a half winning King George's and Oaks. So we made a mistake there. We wanted to see whether he go that distance. He didn't see out the last part. And beaten by an exceptionally good stayer, who, who won at York in blistering style, if people remember last year, by about 20 lengths. So he ran well, and then we're back to a mile and a half here. We entered the race. We couldn't believe there were just so few entries. So that no matter what, we've got the run here to support the race. And, and it's very much gone our way. So what would be the plan now? I notice you haven't got any entries for him, so where might you go? Well, he's won a group two now, which, you know, it leaves me a little bit looking. I don't want to go rushing into a King George. He's just put a huge effort in today, nearly breaking track record. So that would be a terrible mistake. You get be caught on the bounce there, as they say. But we'll just look carefully at the programme book. He handles everything from good to firm to soft. So he's pretty versatile. Just the trainer needs to get his thinking cap on now. So is this as far as he wants to go, do you yes. think? Yes, absolutely. You know, Thady and I discussed it, and we thought, we'll put him in this race. It'll suit. The timing's good. We didn't go to Ascot with him. It's tough to go to Royal Ascot and here, have a hard race at Ascot and be at this meeting. So we brought him here fresh. Chekis has got a strong hand in this area. He's obviously got Mustardef as well. Is he on course for the International? Yeah, that's the plan. He goes to the International, which he should enjoy York. He likes to play around before the races, a bit like Stradivarius used to. <laughs> and uh, no, he'll be, he'll be going there, and you know we're very happy with him. We, look, he, we had to space his races. He, you know, he ran in in, in the Neon Cup, which he won in Saudi at the end of February and then he's come back and then he went to the Shima Classic in March and took on the world champion and tried to race with him which was a mistake and back to a mile and a quarter and he shows what he could do in the Prince of Wales. And he's come out of it really well, you've been happy yeah. with everything No, super, very playful, very full of himself every morning. And Emily Upjohn, yeah. I got your reaction immediately after her fine second in the Eclipse. You were thinking about the King George. How is it after you've had yeah, a few so days? After a race like that, she said it's a tough race, you don't go and say well, we're definitely going here. Couldn't be more thrilled. She ate her three bowls of feed that night, out the next morning playing and pick a grass and in great form in herself. Trotted and had to canter again quickly. She was bucking and mucking about. So I'm very pleased with her and there's no reason at this stage that she wouldn't wouldn't be going to a King George. Excellent stuff. I look forward to that. Many congratulations on this win. Thanks. Thank you. Race five was next. It was the British Stallion for Studs EBF Maiden Philly.